Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever that you might be tuning in from. Welcome to this panel on employee experience as part of the virtual conference on workplace resurgence by ETHR World. Uh, hope you're staying safe and healthy in these difficult and unpredictable times. Uh, the topic at hand, of course, uh, seems to be all the more important right now, employee experience. And over the next uh, 40 minutes or so, we hope to pull in the collective wisdom of all the panelists here as we try and address some critical aspects of employee experience. My name is Ajit Nair. Uh, I'm a talent advisor with Kincentric, uh, which is a Spencer Stewart company. Kincentric was formed in July last year uh, with the acquisition of Aon's talent advisory business globally by Spencer Stewart. We believe in unlocking the power of people and teams, and the name Kincentric, in fact, is a combination of kin and centric, which means centered around people who you, who you work closely with. Uh, joining me today, uh, as you can see, is a panel of senior esteemed industry leaders. Uh, so let me just do a quick round of introductions in, in no particular order. Uh, we have S.V. Nathan, uh, partner and chief talent officer at Deloitte India, uh, and, and he tells me that, uh, you know, he, uh, he's really passionate about uh, the workplace and writes a monthly blog uh, called Hashtag Slice of Work. And then of course, most of us know him uh, as being a regular and one of the trendsetters on LinkedIn with that popular hashtag Office Truths. Uh, so if any of you in the audience are still not following him, then that's where you've got to go and catch him. Uh, we have Preeti Singh. Uh, Vice President of Resources uh, South Asia for Mastercard. Preeti is passionate about philanthropy and uh, is associated with many organizations that invest in skill development initiatives and education of girls in India. So welcome Preeti, welcome Nathan. Uh, we have uh, Bhumika Srivastav, uh, who is the Director and Head of Employee Experience at Airbnb, the brand that a lot of us are uh, watching closely. Uh, she loves traveling, and that's obviously what attracted her to join Airbnb, and has spent a lot of time working with different organizations, enabling women empowerment and childcare. Uh, we have Roshni Balwa, who's Director of Human Resources at L'Oreal India. Uh, Roshni says that her hobby is traveling, uh, you know, solo backpacking, but maybe Roshni, you and Bhumika could do it together sometime. Uh, she is a certified executive coach, loves to work with people in helping them uh, find their answers. She also loves Tom and Jerry, <laughs> you know, and watching that in, in her free time. And as she calls it, uh, old habits die hard, you know, so it helps her keep her mind agile. Last but not the least, we have Sudakshina Bhattacharya, CHRO ILNFS group. She loves her yoga and meditation, which energizes her. Uh, coaching is something that enriches her. And similar to Roshni washing, uh, watching Tom and Jerry, you know, makes the the possibilities of every situation uh, and don't we all need that at this point in time so welcome to all of you and and it's a pleasure hosting such uh, an elite panel uh, as at this particular virtual event so let me dive right in uh, and and set a bit of a context and and really uh, you know promise to shut up after that so when we talk about employee experience at at Kincentric, we essentially talk about moments that matter. You know, so when we think about ourselves as customers, right, uh, we say that, you know, the, the most memorable experiences are the ones that either created a significant high point or a really bad low point. You know, and we, we tend to kind of really recall both of these uh, pretty significantly. That's because the human brain is wired to remember both the extreme highs and extreme lows and the related experiences that drive this. This is probably also you know, relevant to employee experience. You know, as we look at what is it that really matters to our employees? What are those relevant moments that really uh, will remain in the employee's head if we are able to do a great job of creating the right experiences? The first so-called prompt or question at all of you, if I can have you, Nathan, uh, pick this up. Uh, first and then we could we could just have everybody weigh in. Uh, so the 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 critics of the so-called EX word, you know, really talk about the fact that, you know, this is a word that, you know, HR has always been doing this. What's the big deal around employee experience? So 
you know nathan what's your answer to those critics and why why is this so so relevant today i think you hit upon something which is absolutely important i mean what did matter many years ago matters today yeah. because in more than one way an employee's experience is their reality yeah. and reality defines their engagement with any organization so today employees either stay with an organization invest in their organization and feel very fulfilled in the organization if they believe that they have the right kind of an experience and the moment they feel that there is less than the kind of experience that they are getting right today then they vote with their feet they leave organizations and therefore understanding that et is ex is personal to each individual it can change and therefore you you not got to be looking at it as just a piece meal okay a person comes in and that's all that matters it's got to be every step of the way right through a person's life cycle therefore it's absolutely key to an organization and if you do not have the right kind of employee experience and you're not able to give it to your people then somebody else will that's why it's important yeah absolutely somebody else will and and you know as as we talk about the marketplace and you know how things are really hotting up and how things might change after post covid if there is going to be a time like that uh it it's 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 important to kind of keep that in mind if i can pull you in roshni now uh, to really you know give us your you know so called overall perspective on on how this is you know relevant in these times so uh, thank you firstly ajit uh, and happy to be part of this uh, panel today yeah. uh, on a very important topic uh, we are discussing about employee experience uh, uh, in in the context of covid and even otherwise right uh, i must say that uh, you know building a very positive employee experience is a very core to the people strategy right uh, and over the years if you see the workplace and the workforce practices have been evolving uh, extremely very high right so the employee experience today is no longer just about creating a good onboarding experience and having a good performance management review uh, you know or having the you know engagement activities around your employees right so these are no longer about that instead it's about instilling the sense of purpose and pride uh, you know having an inspiring leadership in your organization robust technology and enabling tools uh, opportunity to work in multi skill projects and a great amount of flexibility at the work are the areas which actually helps create extraordinary employee experience today and pretty much these are the things which also define the culture and the value of the organization right and this is where i say that the culture of organization around enablement and empowerment leads to building an employee experience right having said so i must also add here that culture cannot stand in isolation you know it has to be supported by Uh, your organization structure your uh, policies your processes and be more verbalized right that's how employees will really uh, look at the experience actually being felt right uh, you know and at l'oreal there are a lot of structural programs that we do for our employees to gain that experience for and i can give one or two examples very quickly uh, you know for example we have sharing beauty with all which is our sustainability commitment program or for that matter we have a shadow board program called youth voice where actually we enable and empower our young talents to really participate in big business meetings and so on all in all if you look at our employee engagement survey also today no longer just measures the engagement but it also measures the level of en enablement that exists in the organization so pretty much i would you know circle it back to how organizations really build the culture around some of these aspects to really create a very uh, strong employee experience uh, you know which actually leads people to stay with the company for longer sure thanks thanks uh, for that roshni uh, bhumika you want to come in and talk a bit about you know how this this kind of is relevant you you are probably the 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 freshest uh, you know organization the newest organization of the lot 
and so it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what's the perspective that you have. So you want to come in. Sure. Uh, Ajit, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. Sure. And um, employee experience being uh, one of the critical uh, element in Airbnb overall. Um, and in some ways, uh, there's a lot uh, that we have done and get spoken about in employee experience area. Uh, in my, you know, in my view, an employee experience is pretty much an outside-in perspective of employees, which is basically how employees are perceiving their own experience with the organization, instead how organization perceives the experience of their employees. So, you know, it, it pretty much starts, as Roshni said, it's just not about onboarding, performance management learning and development or for that matter even exit experience but it also um, you know aligns with the fact that as you mentioned moments of matter moments that matters which is high points low points sort of transition point of an employee in the organization and how employee experiences enabling or enhancing the experience of our employees through these transition points so Today is probably, um, you know, irrespective of COVID or not, generally, uh, you know, the, it, it is time for all of us to sort of have an element of design thinking into some of these uh, core HR practices that we generally have right from onboarding and see how we are influencing these transition points and how we are sort of building connect with our employees. And that's in my mind as core of employee experience. That's great. I'm glad you bring in that point about the employee as the customer almost. And how do you start to do design thinking around, you know, keeping the employee almost as, as the starting point and saying, you know, what is he or she expecting and what are we able to kind of draft out for them? Uh, Preeti, uh, you, of course, part of MasterCard, global organization, uh, you know, very well laid out processes, very, very strong brand, safe as well. Um, you know, so, so talk to us about how do you kind of really look at EX as a, overall perspective. Thank you, Ajit. Uh, given the importance of people in every organization, uh, the companies need to really plan and respond to the employees' needs. And I'm more specifically talking about the COVID-19 situation. This is an unprecedented time. You know, it is helpful for the organizations to really start thinking about three deeply connected dimensions. One is the work, which is the what, the workforce, yeah. which is the who, and the workplace, which is the where. In these unprecedented times, the where has got displaced a little bit. Uh, so, Dakshina, uh, you probably have the best background, uh, you know, uh, literally among all of us, and some of us have been envious of that. But, uh, you know, talk to us a bit about your perspective on EX. And, and you've come from, uh, you know, a financial services conglomerate, uh, you know, and, and talk to us a bit about what you see as being critical from an EX point of view. And in yeah. my uh, experience as an employee and uh, also as HR, who's a custodian of experiences that employees uh, have in an organization, I've seen that creating positive moments of truth is at the core of giving the experience that an employee wants. And also whether COVID or not, uh, organization environment, organization situation is dynamic. And hence, it impacts how the organization creates those moments of truth by experience. The positives are that you know, we already have technology and in the last few years, technology has made uh, many things easier, especially um, you know, if it's about creating a moment of truth for employee query. Today, it is not as difficult to uh, be able to be prompt and accurate about responding to employee queries. And that actually creates a large opportunity to bring in the human element of creating those experiences. And today, in this time, in the last month or so, when our employees are, from, are working from home, some of them are even stuck uh, you know, in the project sites, it, it calls upon HR to really bring in that human element. And uh, to my mind, empathy and compassion as two strong pillars of employee experience have never been as important as it is today. You know, Preeti just uh, mentioned about people not only working from home, but also working for home. 
And you know, we did a dipstick a uh, couple of weeks ago with our employees uh, to figure out what are they what, what are they experiencing during this time working from home. And uh, most people have come back saying uh, their work timings have actually got extended because each one is trying to match the work timings of the other, and the other trying to juggle between the work at home and work from home. You know, the good thing is this is wonderful about diversity because no one's talking about it because this is an experience which is actually happening to everyone. It's no more gender. It is no more certain sections or certain geographies or anyone. So it's, it's, some, it's somewhere, you know, creates a lovely unity of workforce. And that is a wonderful experience, not only for the employee, but also for the employer. I mean, at the end of it, employee experience is, is, um, is directed towards loyalty, towards accountability, towards commitment. When else but this? There is no physical environment. There is no timeline. There is no uh, attendance muster. There is no, uh, you know, in and out. Yet, employees are actually delivering what they are required to deliver. Yeah. Well, I think at the end of this uh, COVID, uh, uh, you know, lockdown or this whole situation, I think it will there'll be wonderful insights that will come come about that will redefine how organizations would want to capitalize on what has come out from here and weave that into the employee experience strategy as the overall part of people's strategy going forward. So that's my yeah. That's that's what where I am about employee experience today. Thanks, thanks for that. And uh, I think it's, it's a very, very relevant point that it's a big unifier, right? In terms of what people are trying to grapple with. And of course, uh, you know, the gender so-called barriers breaking and people doing things on either side in a way. Uh, so, so in fact, uh, the COVID queue is what would have uh, really been my next one, you know, and any of you could pick this up really that uh, I'm sure everyone who's tuned in today is keen to know what's happening around COVID and what are organizations like yours are really doing to help employees, uh, you know, maintain the employee experience, take it to the next level, differentiate the employee experience. They would want to really understand from your expertise across all of you. So whoever wants to go first, I don't want to make this a polling game, but <laughs> wants to, to pick this up, uh, you know, uh, we're all yours. Sure. Ajit, uh, if I may go first, this is Preeti here. At yeah, MasterCard, please. these times, like, we wouldn't imagine that this will be the time that we'll all have to really work virtually and remotely. What we have really come up, this is not something new that we have created, but we have embellished it well, is our culture framework, where we have encouraged people, and this is like putting the culture to the forefront and the testing times are the testament to what employees really truly experience and they really showcase their belongingness to the organization. We put in place a framework called MasterCard Way. It's a culture framework which encourages the people to own their work, which is like more empowerment, focused on empowerment. Simplify, we're asking people to uncomplicate the work. So what they were not able to do at the workplace, this is their empowerment to make life easy for themselves. Heartful risk taking, the visibly courageous. So these are the unprecedented times. Our, our banks, our merchants, our government partners, fintechs are looking at the innovative solutions. So taking risk and telling us what's the requirement of the day. And the other piece that we put in together, the part of this framework is putting in place a sense of urgency. So deliver to the customer and consumer requirement and promise with speed and agility that we put in as a frame, framework. And we put in a recognition framework around it so that anybody who kind of comes up with an innovative idea that helps our customers, our brand ambassadors, and these times that will be truly recognized and this will become the part of our new normal when we go back to work and life is probably back to usual self. I, I can go next. Uh, yeah, so let me just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the corporates we've been, in the corporates we've been talking about the VUCA world for a very long time, right? Yes. And really preparing the organization for what's so-called so digital disruption by bringing in a lot of agility and flexibility uh, in the company. But look around, today I think we are actually living the VUCA in the most uh, you know, livable uh, uh, times. Uh, and this is, the, this is the time where your culture also gets tested the most, right? Yes. If you've prepared your organization well 
on the agility, on the empowerment and enablement culture. I think most of the organizations who are absolutely able to work seamless, seamlessly during these times are those companies who've actually invested a lot in building that strong culture. Having said so, that there are many organizations who are also adapting to the new behaviors these days, right? Because there is a compulsion, there is a situation, and I think the organizations are really uh, adapting to new technology, new behaviors, new leadership behaviors. Uh, and I think it would be very important if all of these have to become a new normal, these organizations must go back and put in a system and structure in place because that, then it enables employees to follow that through even going forward as a new normal. Yes. On the crisis situation, and I will just touch upon a few things because I, am not, I don't want to take all the limelight of speaking about L'Oreal, which I'm very proud of. Uh, in the crisis situation, we are actually uh, you know, uh, addressing this on a response strategy on the basis of five Cs, uh, what we call it care, uh, communication, redefining your customer's experience, uh, community, and cash, right? And I think a few of them are very straightforward, and I'm sure a lot of organizations are doing it today. When you talk about care, for us, I think health and sa safety is at the topmost chart, right? Uh, how do you engage your people on wellness, whether it's about the financial wellness, emotional wellness, and so on? I also feel that mental uh, you know health services are becoming really very uh, you know important these days because a lot of people are going through emotions and frustration a lot of anxiety levels and hence some of these services are actually becoming very handy for people to really uh, look forward to and 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 build a little bit of a calm in their ways of postures and working uh, communication i mean i cannot reiterate enough that the amount of transparent communication uh, and the regular communication in these times really puts all the anxiety at ease. You know? This is a great opportunity for leaders to really rise above. Uh, manage and control the teams. Uh, these are the words that should really be replaced now by empower and enabling the teams, right? Uh, yes. Leaders must demonstrate empathy and compassion uh, on one side and also use these times uh, you know, as a collective intelligence of their team uh, to prepare some of the important and reimagine the bounce back plan because the world is going to go back to the work after after the uh, you know lockdown and therefore what are some of those bounce back ideas that the team can collectively work uh, is something that is really very important to uh, engage with your teams with um, customer and community I think I I, I I don't want to say that this is an option any longer this is a must for everyone you must pull in your employees to build this experience of giving back to the society at large. At L'Oreal, we are today manufacturing about 60,000 liters of sanitizers and giving it to needy people. Employees are also volunteering and contributing to the relief fund today. Teams are working on you know, serving the food, et cetera, to the migrant workers. And I think this is a sense of fulfillment that you can really give to your uh, you know, employees during these times. Uh, and the last and the not least, I will spend just 30 seconds on that, is the cash, right? Uh, we all know that customers pay our salary. And today, the customers are really not there. The businesses are quite, uh, you know, badly yeah. impacted. You know, almost 98% of the organization in India today are on a very fragile financial structure, right? They are looking for, uh, you know, some sort of a help to sustain and survive. And this is a time I think the leadership, the teams must put together a different kind of a scenario planning, make sure that you are cutting down on unnecessary cost, posting, you know, uh, pushing your cost, uh, which are really not needed now to maybe six months and 12 months down the line. Uh, having a very strong people continuity plan is also very important, right? And I'm not saying that companies to become very holy cow and say we will not do job cuts, we will not do salary cuts, because some of these are going to be in inevitable for some organizations to really survive, and these will be the last resorts. Uh, but I think you have to do it with a lot of uh, you know, humanity and with a lot of uh, transparency and communication, because that's what people will appreciate. That's the transparency employees will understand and really appreciate, which will go in a long way to build that a mutual relationship uh, with the company and the, and the employees. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that point on, uh, you know, the, the human bit, which is really about staying on course with your culture, right, and your purpose. Yes. And 
uh, you know, this is a time to demonstrate it uh, rather than just have them hanging off the walls. Yes. Nathan, uh, Sudakshina, Bhumika. Um, so, you know, interestingly, when um, we tried to find out from people that what were the concerns that they had while they were working from home. So, of course, one obvious was missing the work environment, the physical work environment. But what came out in that was that employees are also experiencing some sort of an uncertainty, may not be necessarily only about employment, but generally uncertainty about many things. And the second was that there was a sense of insecurity, what happens to the future of employment, but just to feel that I'm doing some things which are new. Um, I'm in an environment living a daily life, which is different from what one has as, as this actually was the, like the foundation of what we launched called uh, Stay Inspired. So this is the time which is a crisis. So there's an inspiration from this. So hence the initiative is called the Stay Inspired. And that's built on experience sharing, focus on skill building. And the third is um, about reskilling or skill building. You know, and it's simple. The the advisories or the communications that have gone out around this is very simple saying one is, one is actually saving the time to travel, which is in a city like Bombay is clearly a couple of hours. So we've created bite-sized learning links where people can just spend about 30 minutes to, uh, of a day and, uh, and, uh, and get one notch higher in a certain skill. So it's like a badge being given over there. The second is, which again, you know, this, this time has actually proved that a lot is possible. So uh, I remember that, you know, at some, on good days when the BHRs were mandated to reach out to employees, it was always like, how are we going to reach out such large uh, base of employees? But today it is actually possible. It is becoming possible, big learning, a new learning. So the second is about reaching out to every employee. So we've mandated that each HR person has a list of employees whom they're physically calling to find out how things are and how things are in the family. And that connect is a huge thing at this point of time. Yeah. And the third, as I mentioned, is experience sharing. So we've created a platform where people can come in and either they write their stories or they record their stories. Then that inspires the others around who are reading it. So I think this is creating, it's somewhat replacing, not maybe, may not be 100% replacement of a, of a typical work day or a typical work premise, but trying to virtually create there where people are interacting with each other, not missing out on, you know, the coffee conversation, but just walking up to someone's desk, creating the small windows of discussion. And these have been impactful so far. Thank you. Yep. Nathan, Bhumika. So uh, for Airbnb, uh, you know, as some of you have uh, rightly spoken about the fact that times like these uh, put the organizational culture to test. And organizations who are very strong on cultural values are probably our winners on the other side. So um, having said that, I'll just take a minute to talk about our uh, mission and our values because that's where everything is centered. And our employee experience or business outcomes are also centered to values and mission statements. So Airbnb's mission statement is belong anywhere. And that's where the whole empathy, compassion, uh, community comes in picture. Uh, it's about creating a space. It's about it's about creating a world where anybody and everybody can belong. So, so in terms of you know COVID situation or otherwise, also in terms of diversity, in terms of inclusion, in terms of involving people in the decisions, and creating a community which feels like family, goes in a long way. Um, so that's, that is the North Star, I would say. So whenever we need to take a decision, that's a North Star. We look at it and we say whether it feels right or not. So that's something that helped us. Talking quickly about values. Uh, so we have fairly simple four values, which governs pretty much everything in the organization. So like being a host. And that is not just our host and guest community on our platform, but also every employee our peers upwards and downwards. So are we being good host? And, and some of our initiatives have been around this, like, you know, uh, men, mental well-being, like constant communication, as Rashni spoke about communication. It's so important to have an ongoing stream of communication. Some of the things that we've done is that our 
you know, our uh, CEO Q&A doesn't happen like once in a month. It's weekly. There's a coffee chat that happens weekly. Now Zoom sessions. So you can just, it's like an over communication, but that's the need of the app. That is, yeah. that is also like, you know, ask me anything sessions from HR. There are like, um, you know, a, a whole lot of comps that we are sending to our people and sort of also having not just EAP, but we did Pulse. So it's not about employee engagement once in a year any anyways. It's not about quarterly surveying anyways. It's pulsing, as we spoke about, moments of matter, Ajit. And this yes. is one great moment that matters to everyone. So it was like pulsing at the start of it, pulsing after a month, and then knowing that what actually our people are feeling about, what is the need. And then transitioning into those needs quickly, yeah. not just that, oh, we have a set HR policy or yeah. we have a set HR plan and we're going to go by that. So, so that's um, there from a, being a host perspective. The other one is be a serial entrepreneur. So our, our um, founders actually started with a serial box and that's one of the values that we have. And basis that the during times, uh, crisis time like this, we have a model called as intrapreneurship, which is uh, having, you know, empowering our own employees to innovate as well as become an entrepreneur and managers in the current organization. So it's the uh, crisis is, uh, gives an opportunity for innovation. That's the North Star again. So innovate, 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 help in terms of restructuring, the business once uh, wherever it is needed and uh, that that also gives a lot of empowerment uh, to people saying that okay we are part of the decision making the organization we also have very transparent communication saying that what's going to work like because travel industry is worst hit industry at the moment yeah. so being uh, authentic being true um, and having that sort of communication in terms of you know what are these steps how are we innovating what are what is this industry is going through and what are some of the things that we are taking up and involving them in decisions has helped us uh, keeping the experience high um, so that's on the uh, second bit and third again championing the mission so which is belong anywhere as I said uh, giving back to society, uh, again, as Roshni mentioned, so um, how well are we giving back to our society? And that doesn't just mean that how we are helping uh, the society where we live in, like, you know, workers or healthcare systems. Like, we have opened our houses for frontline health workers as a business. Yeah. Uh, we also talk about, you know, Airbnb community, people around each other who needs help, cross-functional team, utilization of tools, into doing into you know sort of making sure that we create smaller coes within the organization which works like plug and play so if there is a challenge in one beam there's a plug and play uh, that happens um, so cross-functional involvement and i would say the last one is embrace the adventure so that comes very true at times like these uh, you know whether we talk about wuka world or any any adventure where you know 100 percent moves into work from home and we don't know whether we when and how we're gonna go come back to office it's about again uh, uh involving our employees in this adventure so uh it's just culture is just um at airbnb uh hr doesn't drive so it is something that we enable our employees to drive so it's pretty much in them um, and uh, it's heartwarming to see how all of them are engaging with, we have something called as air shares. So last one month we've learned how to make mocktails, cookies, recipes, oatmeal, biscuits, and whatnot. And uh, so I, I would say that everything transitioned beautifully in a virtual uh, workspace. Yeah. And some of the things that highlight, again, uh, are the entrepreneurship that I spoke about, empowering our people, uh, you know, being them at the center of all the decisions that we're taking in the organization, and also very important upskilling people during this time. So that's, that's you know, uh, sort of innovating with something called as in shorts, like the app that we have. It's about one topic on a daily basis, popping up to everyone, 
saying that, you know, what are we doing about this topic? Do you learn more? Having sessions around that. So these are some of the things. Uh, I, I, I think we should, we should uh, bring in Nathan now. He has been patiently hearing. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm sure he has his, his points. So Nathan, over to you without much. Thank you. One of the difficulties uh, coming in last is, it's almost like all the points have been covered. <laughs> uh, but let me let me try to synthesize all of this. Uh, the way I see it is, the the whole model is about a framework which I call as the connect, develop, and care framework. Yeah. So this whole thing is about when you say connect. I've never seen any time when there is a digitized experience for our people right from the time when they join. And by the way, we have had people join us even when there's a complete lockdown. Yeah, People have joined us and um, we've also had people leave us, unfortunately. So did we know how to get this e-joining ever before? When you have to give a laptop, you have to give a mail ID, you have, and there are a whole host of things. And if you're in a leg regulated industry and some part of what business we do, is about regulation, then how do you make sure that people come in with the right kind of training and how do you get those trainings? So we got, we got around to do all of that. Connect is also about uh, listening to the voice of the people. How do you communicate with them? Uh, as much as we have our leaders speak to them and yes, indeed, we've never known how to connect with people as much as we have known in the recent past. Uh, the big one is listen, to the voice of the unsaid, the unkahi. What is it that people are not saying today? Because in some shape and form, you also get to engage with a diverse pool of talent, which talks about their worries on the several AHMs and the Zoom calls that we have. Uh, there's always this part about what is it that people are most comfortable about? And they will speak to you about the huge connect that we are starting to have. They're able to hear things as they are, being transparent. Yes. They also know that the concern that they have in the back of their minds is, hey, what happens to me next? Connect is also about how do we reward people through their contributions and uh, that kind of a connect, because now there is a platform, there is a digital platform that has never been used as much as it has been today. That really connects people to just not the firm, but to each other. Yeah. Connect is also about the familial culture that Deloitte is all about. Um, we launched recently, and by the way, for uh, professional services, normally it's straight jacketed. We started a newsletter, a fun kind of a newsletter, where we have had a CEO in a t-shirt, never seen ever before. <laughs> we have had children where they were preparing meals. In fact, we had children who were teaching their fathers how to cook. And all of these, and, and they brought these newsletters together. So that's on the connect piece. How do you really connect with employees, respond to some of the uh, latent fears that they may have, and of course, wholeheartedly, with just not the person, but the family in totality. How do you develop people? This is a great opportunity. You've never had a time when you have had a captive audience, and so how do you bring in the skills of the future. So several programs do a lot of upskillings that you would always say, okay, I'm gonna wait for another day when I can get this thing done. Uh, we've also found great opportunity as you're looking at developing this, uh, opportunities for coaching. How do you look at peer-to-peer -peer coaching? Because this is the first time ever, ever in our history, in our living history where we have had a lot of millennials who are completely unsupervised. The youngest generation in the world is totally unsupervised, not in the normal kind of supervision that happens. And today, they are learning how to collaborate. So you're really setting, in some way, a culture on the fly, a culture of trust, a culture of collaboration, a, a culture of empowerment, something that was spoken of earlier. Yeah. And in more than one ways, getting people to develop their own capabilities and all this in the shortest period of time. 
We have had new leaders who are now born. We have had women in leadership. They have taken on roles that they have never seen before. And of course, all of this, um, even when you're doing this, how do you do it beyond the confines of, of what you have? Because today is a virtual world. You can go and develop people who are in any part of the country. You don't really have to do it just because you're part of a particular office. We also started to look at the third element, which is care. Every day, every single day, we check in on all our people. Every single day. We have to make sure that all of our people anywhere in the country, are they safe? Are the parents safe? Are the brothers, sisters, are they safe? Is there anything that we can do for them? Extending benefits to families. So what if you've done a lot of webinars, and in all our webinars, we make one thing common. We say, please make sure that you share this webinar with your family, you share the link with your friends. Anybody can attend our webinars because the more that you develop this community building and bonding, the better it is for people to start to relate with what is happening today. We've also started to look at well-being, not simply as, a, uh, as bits and pieces, but we said, let's look at it holistically. People on the holistic stuff, it's about the mental, physical, and uh, we are also looking at financial. So we are helping people on webinars saying, okay, here is what we would suggest you should do with the money. And uh, by the way, we have also segmentized that. We've, we've had one webinar, which is only for women, because women think very differently from the men. And this is something that we got to know because we brought a psychiatrist in. We, we had all kinds of psychologists come in and spend time with us. And each one of the sessions, we learn a, a lot more about it. We've also started to look at how do we provide support in any way that we can to the larger community, apart from contributions to our prime minister's relief fund and so on. But can we look at who are the people who are people who are our contractors, people, people who may be less privileged than we are? Is there any way that we can help them? So we bring in a purpose. And the purpose is, how do you create an impact that matters? And one thing that I, I remember, something that uh, we did as a program is, how do you engage children who are at home? And we created a program. And um, so these are all for the parents. And you won't believe it. The people who attended the, the max were the fathers. Because we, we, got, we got fathers to learn, how do you engage children at home? By the way, again, this was for people in different age groups. Um, suffice it to say, an opportunity where you started to look at things beyond looking at human resources or talent coming into an organization, when you start to look at, hey, what is the heart and the soul behind all the talent that comes in to work for you, then all that you say about connect, develop, and care takes a completely different dimension. Absolutely. And so on that note, let me turn this back to you, Ajit. Sure. And I think I'm glad uh, you know all of you have brought in, as I see it, very real uh, dimensions of what creates those moments that matter. You know whether it is around community service that Roshni you spoke about, or Nathan uh, you just brought in that point about teaching fathers how to really keep children occupied. You know toughest task at hand in a way, or Shina you speaking about you know using those bite-sized learning. You know, and and uh, Umika, you spoke about uh, community and on entrepreneurship. Priti, you spoke about uh, culture and you know making it come alive in these times. So I think uh, it's it's wonderful to see how uh, you know in some ways how these testing times have precipitated uh, you know a lot of these uh, initiatives, which otherwise might not have uh, found a place on the table, maybe because of things that are more so-called urgent. Uh, you know, there will always be urgent things uh, to do in, in, in you know, so, so it's wonderful to see this. I just want to get quick uh, comments from uh, all of you around, and, and we did bring in segments. So we spoke about fathers, we spoke about millennials, uh, we spoke about extended, you know, kind of workforces, women. So, so from an EX perspective, anything that, that kind of really uh, you want to come in with any of you around, how are we segmenting an offering, you know? 
because it's not a one size fits all while while the thematics around it could be one size fits all but but you know how it gets delivered could be different you know based on what the segment really needs so any any examples around that which i think uh, people who ha uh, have tuned in would really benefit from so let me go first clap in here sure so i if you if you look at uh, what we are doing about differentiation yeah you're so right you you really have to do it 85% of our people that work with us are millennials yeah experience is always in the eye of the beholder so the beholder is the center of all of this we we have a multi generational workforce we have gen x gen y all of that but predominantly if it's 85% millennials we have a partner who is nothing short of a chief millennial officer and she sits on the leadership team of the firm and her duty is to ensure that all policies practices initiatives are aligned to the needs of the millennials in fact she has her own millennial council and even as even in these times she's in touch with the council just to make sure that we have the right kinds of policies that come by that make it relevant uh, one of the things that that this particular team did recently was to do something called shared leave instead of going and giving up leave here and there and we know of some people who would have exhausted their leave because they are into caregiving and they what do they do for their leave so you can you can donate your leave into a leave pool and this is an idea that came in from the millennials and so the shared leave program is a stupendous success people donate it's it's a, you know millennials are into not about just themselves but about the larger community yeah. and doing for each other so that's a great example okay others ajit uh, maybe i can add uh, and i think uh, when you said uh, one size does not fit all it's absolutely true and nathan you also br brought in the whole millennial and the multi generational group that we exist today in the organization in fact you can actually build a little more complexity to it by adding uh, you know gender to it by adding different segment of talent to it yes. because all of these really requires a very different kind of experience and when i talk about gender again it's not just about uh, the male female gender that i'm talking about it could be also when you are hiring people with special ability in your company or when you are having uh, you know people from lgbt community in your organization now all of this requires a very different kind of uh, uh, guidelines or the frameworks to be exist in the system to provide a very unique experience you know and this is where what we call is you know like in marketing you have precision marketing uh, that's pretty much exist in the world today uh, when it comes to employee experience we talk about precision experience for our employee and therefore how is your policies and your frameworks are built very inclusive so that even when you have these kind of diversity existing in the company everyone has something to find uh, you know for himself herself or for itself in the company you know for example all our policies today are absolutely gender neutral today we do not spell it out anywhere spouses or something even if you have a partner or something you can be well you know covered into the insurance policy or medical policy or any kind of benefits that we extend to our people Uh, it is extremely gender neutral today so i i feel that the world is moving towards a lot more uh, building a precision experience um, more than anything else fantastic yeah segments of one i think in in the marketing realm segments of one are a reality already you know where where you almost are able to deliver what exactly is the need of this individual and can i deliver a product or service that's aligned to that yes uh, ka priti sudakshina uh, may i uh, yeah so um you know in my view that uh, the more chaotic the times are i think it calls for leadership to try and simplify and especially in the context of employee experience to give it to employees in a in a way that is simple for them to absorb and to bring in an element of diverse workforce whether it's millennials or ge older generation there are leaders there are um, you know juniors of the organization there are women and in all of that so under the um, so what we experienced is that you know, under the overall ambit of stay inspired we di divided the five days of the week to target five segments of the organization 
So that uh, helps us to address the commonality of experiences that people are having, yet it allows us the opportunity to have very specifically directed uh, initiatives of that day of the week to those employees. So whether it's a mentoring Monday or a transformation on Tuesday, you know, people who are wellness enthusiasts, you know, who want, for whom this, this, in this period, wellness is a priority. So there is something that is, that has been designed for them. These are all different levers because um, different strokes for different folks. So there are, there are always levers that people have and which they are accessing, especially at this point of time to maintain productivity, maintain sanity, maintain motivation. So we try to segmentize those triggers and create initiatives based on that. And um, I think the reception from people for, from, you know, of some of these things, that, that's what experience is all about. I mean, an organization will look at saying, you know, how involved are the people in, in what's going on here? And this is simple, but it's impactful. And I think that should be the mantra because anyways, there is complexity and anyways, there's a lot of chaos. So from that, if there's something that can be distilled, which can connect employees, keep that connect with the organization. I think that's, that's leadership at this point. Going to the point that Ajit, you mentioned that there are different generations and all, the one size cannot fit all, MasterCard has a similar situation. We do have 85% millennials and of course, some of the Gen Z's, Gen X and the Gen Y's as well. So what we've done is going with the MasterCard way culture where we said that own, simplify, and also show the courageous just taking of ability. We kind of looked up to our people to design some of these frameworks that we thought that will be helpful for creating an experience during these unprecedented times. So when we went to our senior leaders, they were more concerned about their family, their well-being, their extended families, etc. So we kind of looked at our benefit programs. We've come up with a special leave category by name of COVID leave, which is available, which is 10 days of leaves. Two points that I'd like to draw upon. One is around the wellness of our employees that we have embellished that portfolio to ensure there's a leave, there's an insurance coverage, there is a support which has been form of our various psychologists that are available on the phone or to the families and the friends. But what we also looked at for a younger generation, which is the Gen Y, uh, is uh, that uh, we have business resource groups that we they came up with an idea that they kind of have leave have left this is because fifth week of our lockdown and they kind of were suffering from infodemic so they kind of raised their hands and they said enough of this pandemic and now the infodemic because the number of webinars that are happening number of calls that people are making the managers touching their points saying come on a video i want to see how you're doing so all of those things were creating a lot more stress in, in the younger generation so we said why don't you come up with an idea and they came up with something called as brg live wherein they're leveraging Microsoft Teams, which is like they use the platform as Hangout. They're kind of sharing their workout schedules and their teams that they're doing together, workouts in the morning, but because the gyms are closed, they can't go for their runnings and everything else that they did. So that's the workout schedule that they have put as the, the Hangout. They come in, they've come up with another concept called Party with DJ MC. So this is like a virtual party that there is, they're hosting, and this is like every Friday, and they've come up with a timeline that works across the different time zones. So they've kind of divided the globe into three time zones and the parties are hosted every Friday. And believe me, I've got such a huge feedback about how excited people are. They were feeling restless, staying in their room, defining the boundary. They're like having DJ party and DJ nights. And last thing that I'd like to talk about is around this BRG Live is around the community check-ins. Some of the fellow panelists have already spoken about the community volunteering, etc. But what this, this particular community check-in is all about, great, creating ideas. This group has come up with some of the creative ideas, which is around virtual volunteering of their hours. So they are teaching, this, they are, they're kind of found schools that they're teaching to the school kids virtually. They were like, they were like people who wouldn't, couldn't go to the school and their schools did not have those Microsoft Teams or Zooms that like, our kids are able to go and attend those classes every day. But this was like a community school that most of our employees are teaching virtually via a mobile phone app. And this is like superly appreciated. And so we kind of have come up in a nutshell to cater to the requirement of our different generations, different biodiversity backgrounds, and different requirements of the organization to 
manage the expectations and the experiences in these times. Over to you back, Ajit. Sure. Moving up, uh, I know you've been patient, so please go ahead. Sure. Um, so most of the initiatives spoken by uh, my fellow panelists over here uh, is already in existence in our organization as well. Uh, some of the things that we did is, uh, you know, we generally otherwise also had a caregiver leave policy, which is about six weeks. You can attend to anyone who's not well at the, uh, you know, in family uh, or relatives. Apart from that, 28 days of working leaves for like 28 working days of leave for uh, for anyone and who probably needs for COVID situation, um, God forbid, but that's something that proactively we uh, sort of under the wellness scheme has uh, come up with but to but to touch upon the point that you know segmentization of employee experience is absolutely necessary because just to give an example uh, what Nathan talked about is that in CS we also have something like giving back holidays if in case we don't need it uh, voluntarily but we also have a scheme where you know uh, all Millennials pretty much 90%, I would say, for our organization. And all of these initiatives have come from our employees only in terms of, you know, if they're, and for customer experiences, it's 24 by seven. So let's say someone is not well, can I just swap my shift with someone else, right? So those, it's also enabling business strategy at the same time, it's enhancing the experience of a person who's actually in need for something. So, so, in in terms of every different business unit, the talent workforce working in that particular business unit, their need is different and how we are sort of uh, enabling our HR programs and framework to address to the need of that particular segment is important. One very important thing also is we all spoke about diversity and inclusion, but it is also important how we are transforming or also enabling behavioral changes in the organization. So it's easy to um, hire people from specially able segment or LGBTQ community, but how about other employees in the organization? How uh, open are they? How inclusive are they? And how we are sort of helping or coaching, training them to become more inclusive is also very important. So I would say those everyday behavioral transitions and those behavioral elements which are aligned to culture um, enhances the employee experience. So that's, that's also very important. Yeah, and I know we could go on for, for probably the next 60 minutes <laughs> talking about some of these uh, uh, but but i guess it's it's a good time to pull everything together uh, and and uh, if i were to just try and draw some threads out of what all of you came in very richly with then you know it's been really useful understanding and learning from all of you one is really the strategy and you know how it kind of really why are we doing this and who are we doing this for you know and what is it that we really want to get to uh, becomes a great starting point, right? Otherwise, you know, it's like the Alice in Wonderland uh, line, you know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And you could just be copying ideas from outside, but not knowing why, why you want to kind of really, you know, so the strategy becomes very important. Then the delivery part of it, which I think all of you spoke about, which is whether it's bite-sized learning, community involvement, virtual parties, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, etc. It's It's really about delivering those experiences because that's where the moments of truth really come alive, right? So the strategy and the delivery and how they are in sync. And most importantly, I think uh, almost everyone spoke about, uh, you know, keeping in touch and listening to employees, which is the, the process of continuous dialogue, you know, and how do you kind of keep that going? Because needs are going to change, especially in these times when, when everybody's dealing with their own sets of adversities. So how do you kind of ensure that strategy, delivery, continuous dialogue really becomes the three pronged, uh, you know, frame on which employee experience really sits uh, so that it's sustainable, it's meaningful. And, and most importantly, your employee segments are, are finding that, you know, hey, this is something that works and I enjoy being part of this, right? Yeah. So they don't walk with, the, you know, vote with their feet and, and they are very much part of, part of the journey as, as it goes forward. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, uh, virtual Connect, uh, <laughs> rooms and uh, different colors all around, different organizations. It's, it's been a pretty novel, unique experience, I'm sure, for all of us to come together like this and not sitting in a hotel room. 
uh, or a hotel banquet uh, hall and you know kind of talking directly at each other so thank you for your patience and appreciate your time and look forward to connecting uh, in person and shaking hands sometime soon hopefully we get there sooner than later in your future <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you so much all right thank you thank you so much